Hey, it's Dylan here, um, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Tween Service V2, which is my own module um, I've created. And what Tween Service V2 does is it essentially optimizes um, replication of of uh, the Tween Service. So it still uses the Tween Service to to run basically, um, except it does very different things with networking. So when the Tween Service the actual Roblox uh, integrated tween service runs, it changes the, the property you specify on the server about 20 or 30 times a second. And every single time it changes, it replicates that to every single client in the game, which means that every time that property changes on the server, it's sending 20 or 30 messages to the client saying, this has changed. Um, which is bad for, uh, um, for lack. <laughs> um, I'm not actually 100% sure it does that, but if it does, it's bad. Anyway, um, it will also help, the, this function will help, sorry, this module will help anyway, because it means that the server is not having to process all of these moving parts. Um, essentially what it does is it means the part doesn't tween on the server side. The part just teleports on the server side. So when you tween something using this module, uh, it essentially runs the tween client side and then once the time has passed that the tween should take, the server side will just immediately set all the properties you specified. So essentially, you get the effect of, on the client side, if it's, say, a part moving, the part slowly moves along to where you want it to be, and then on the server side, the part just stays still until the time has passed, and then just teleports to where you want it to be. And that, that really helps with um, lag. So... If you want to do, so there's a few use cases you can't really use this for. It's great for anything kind of aesthetic. So if there's like a train or something, or for example, what I'm, what I made this for really was for cars along a road. Um, but if you want to do it with something that's, if you want, if you want, if you want to tween something that's uh, a key mechanic in a competitive game, use the real tween service because if you're using touched events um, on the object server side, you won't get that client side. You won't be able to register those client side because the server side object staying in the same position, but the client side object is moving. So even if the player walks into a client side, it won't register on the server side. Anyway, if that, if that didn't make sense, don't worry. What we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to put it into a game. So basically we want to click on this, the GitHub repository. You can also download it if you want uh, using that link, but we'll Get it from GitHub for now. For now, sorry. On here, there are uh, some. There's a tiny bit of documentation. There's not much uh, on this module really, um, but there's just the main thing you need to use is this, and then these functions um, are functions of what this returns. So, what we're going to need is replicated tweeting dot lua. So we we'll click that, and we're going to click raw, and select all of this and copy it. Oops, didn't get the last bit. Okay, so we're going to copy that, and we're going to go into our game. Just sorry, delete this stuff. Uh, there we go. Um, and we're gonna, we are going to put a. So this is a module script. So we're going to put a module script into replicate storage. Um, there we go. And this has to be called. Um, what does it need to be called? Replicated tweening. Oh, not dot lua. Just replicated tweening. So we call this replicated tweening, and we remove the contents of it and. Put paste in that stuff we just got from the GitHub repository. If you do want to name this something else for some reason, um, all you need to do is when you copy this line and onto it into the local scripts, you just need to change this to the name of the script. So, following on from that, we're almost done setting this up. The only other thing we need to do is put somewhere in a local script this line. So I'm just going to copy it, and we're going to put a local script because I don't actually have any local scripts, I'm going to make a local script specially for this one. We're going to put it in start player scripts, and I'll call it um, tweening, whatever. Um, and we just have to paste that line. That's it. And now it's set up. So how do you use this? Well, uh, let's show that by, by using a server script. So I'm going to make a script in here. Um, I'm going to start this with a wait. Um, and the reason for that is because when we show it later on, we don't want it running immediately as we spawn in. We want to see it both on the client side and the server side. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, get the module script. And I'm going to call it tween service. You can call it whatever you want. But I'm calling it tween service because I'm using it in the place of the tween service. So we're just going to require it by going require game replicate storage 
uh, rep is tweeting. And now we've got tweet service, um, or, well, uh, sort of fake version of tween service, my version of tween service. Um, and to create the tween, we need to make a tween object. So let's say local tween equals tween service get tween object. And we can see this on the GitHub page. So if we go back to the main page here, you can see that uh, this function, this is the first function you need to call. And what this does is it returns a sort of fake tween object. Um, and these functions are functions of that object it returns. So these are the three parameters we need. Um, so we need an instance, and then we need tween info table, and this is what a tween info table is. Um, oops. And then we need a property table for the properties we want to change and what we want to change them to. So firstly, let's create an instance. In this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be moving a part around since it's just something you can see happening. Um, so it shows how the function, how the module works. So I'll just make it red and anchor it as well, because otherwise uh, it's a bit weird moving stuff around that's not anchored. So let's call it test part, and we're going to reference it in the script. So game workspace test part, that's the first parameter, as in instance, and that instance is the test part. And now we're going to meet, need to add tween info. So I'm going to create a separate variable called tween info. And we're going to create a tween info. So we'll say tween info dot new. And in here, we need to put just like you do a tween service, uh, up to six of these pro up to six of these parameters. You can put none of them, or you can put, you know, one or two of them. My module will work just as well with that as the tween service, the real tween service does. So let's just put the time and and the easy style. I'm going to make this happen for, let's say, ten seconds, just to be safe. And the easy style. So let's say easy style linear. And what that means is it will move continuously at the same rate. And then for the second parameter, we just made it. So we'll say tween info. Oops, sorry. Oh, uh, this variable is our second parameter. Now what's the third parameter? Let's have a look. The third parameter is the property table. So we, this is what we want to change properties to. For this, I'm just going to move the part to the origin. So to do that, we're just going to say cframe, which is the property we want to change, equals cframe.new, vector3.new, 000, which is the origin. So if we were running this just with the real tween service, obviously you'd use tween service create here instead of get tween object. That's the only difference so far. Um, this would move the object to the origin. So now to run this tween, all we need to do is we just say tween play, just like you would with the real twins, tween service. You can see it here. Um, and there's a couple options here as well if you want to make it yield. So you want to make it stop the entire script running until the tween, the tween is finished. And the second parameter is a player. So if you want to make it only run for a certain player, you can do that as well. But most of the time, and for this tutorial, we're just going to be doing it as a global movement for every player. So let's um, test this. So I'm going to use a test server so we can see both the server's perspective and the client's perspective. So let's have a look. <coughs> so you can see on the server, the block is completely still. Um, that's expected as it takes a few seconds for it to start anyway. Now we're loading up the player here. Oh, my, my plugin is a bit massive there. Um, okay, so you can see the part slowly moving towards us, but on the server side, it's completely still. And in a second, it'll teleport to there, just as it is on the client side. So what's actually happened there is it's moved towards us client side, and it's done the tweeting client side, but on the server side, it hasn't moved at all. It's just suddenly teleported. And the benefit of this is that it will always end up in the right place because the server's teleporting it at the end. It's replicating it right at the end to make sure everyone has it in the right place. Um, but also, it's not having to process the um, gradual movement across. It's just processing one teleportation and telling the client to do the rest of the movement. Um, so that's how we use it for, um, for running it like that. That's most of the use cases. Um, let's have a look. What else can we do? So there's a couple of other things. We can pause it and we can play it. So um, if we play it and then let's wait, uh, maybe so it runs for ten seconds. Let's wait three seconds and then play it and then uh, pause it and then wait another three seconds and then play it. Um, yeah, okay. And so what should happen here is after three seconds of movement, it should stop and then wait three seconds, and then start moving again. So let's have a look. Oh, 
obviously on the server side, it won't move at all. Um, but on the client side, well, actually, it will move. Uh, we, we'll see that, actually. But on the client side, we, actually, we'll just watch from the client side for this. So, where is it? There. So you can see it moving towards me. And then, yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's a slight bug. Um, basically, when you pause it, it will finish the tween it was starting. So therefore, it's teleported to me here. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll iron that out. Anyway, so that's how you basically, that's how you use the basic uh, functions. If you want to use it more, if you want to figure out how to use it more, it's here. I'll definitely fix that uh, pause and play thing. Um, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped. And uh, bye.